Hello and welcome to another episode of Jesus Doctrine. Today I want to talk to you about walking in the spirit. The reason I'm making this video is because last week I made a video about in the flesh and I realised that I need to now make videos about walking in the spirit to balance it out right and so I'm going to be making a number of very short videos explaining what it is to walk in the spirit and this is the first part of probably four or five different parts to walking in the spirit and I want to start off by reading Galatians chapter 5 with you. But I say walk in the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. But the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. You are not under the law. And so I want to start off with the ending of that. It speaks about us being under the spirit. And if we're under the spirit, then we are not under the law. That if we are led by the spirit, that we're not under the law. The Bible is filled with laws from the Ten Commandments that Moses gave to the Levitical laws, to the laws written down by various other people that gave them. The laws in the days of Noah, the rule about circumcision through Abraham. Through the Bible, there are many laws and it's very possible that you could become the kind of Christian that just follows that which is written and becomes very legalistic about what they should do. Now, there's nothing wrong with studying to get to know who God is. Let me give you an example. I'm married. I have a wife. Through the study of my wife, I know that my wife loves Lindorf chocolate. And as I've learned these kind of things, I now know what, like, what kind of things I can do to please her generally. But at any given time, Turning up with chocolates for my wife might not be what she wants. There might be other times where she would prefer to be taken out to eat something. And the only way that I'm going to know those things in a given situation isn't just through the studying of the, the word of God, but by asking her what she wants. Sometimes our relationship can't just be studying texts, understanding how people behave and analysing it and trying to work out what we can do to please people. Sometimes our relationships got to be based upon us having a relationship, us communicating and speaking to one another. So it's true with God. With God, he wants us to know him intimately. He wants us to ask him. He wants us to speak to him. He wants us to understand his ways and to learn his ways. And he wants to be able to lead and to guide us. And this is what the spirit of God's all about. God wants to lead and guide us as well as have us know his word. Now, the beauty of these this is that they go hand in hand when we listen to God and we listen to what he is speaking to us sometimes we as human beings have the habit of mishearing or having selective hearing I'm accused of it commonly by my colleagues at work I hear what I want to hear sometimes and so we've always got the fallback of the written word of God so that we can check that we're not just hearing what we want to hear but that we've truly heard the right words that God has spoken to us and we've rightly received and perceived what God was speaking and so we have to use the both of them together in a balance it's very common for a new believer to spend all of their time in the word of God and I recommend it because getting to know God's word is a beautiful thing but a time will come when more and more frequently God will begin to speak to you now you're probably thinking how does God speak to us well let me pull up another verse to give you an example God spoke to Paul the Apostle and it says, And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, Do not be afraid to go on speaking boldly. Do not be silent. And that was in Acts 18 verse 9. God spoke to Paul the Apostle through a vision. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, Peter gets up and says that your young men will dream dreams and your old men will see visions and your daughters shall prophesy. And so we read about a number of different ways that God was able to speak, to prophesy, to give visions, to give dreams. We read about the Holy Spirit leading us through revealing in us our sin, re revealing in us what the right thing to do or righteousness. The Holy Spirit will also reveal in us a sense of judgment. When you've done something wrong, the Holy Spirit will send you a conviction or a sense of judgment to reveal your past mistake 
so that you don't make it again in the future. These are all methods that God will use to speak to us. As Christians, I think that so often in time, it seems like only the pastor says that God speaks to us. No, God speaks to us all. The question is, do we understand? Now, like a young child in the beginning of a relationship, when a baby is born, they don't speak the same language. But through spending a lot of time together, they learn to say goo goo gaga, eventually mama, dada, and they begin to speak the more complicated things of language together. So it is when we walk with God, we might not always start off with goo goo gaga and dada and mama, but eventually our knowing and our ability to hear from God will develop with time should we choose to exercise this practice of asking God what he wants, not just asking other men or not just going to the Bible. It's important that we ask God and that we seek God. Sometimes he might not answer, other times he might give you an answer. It's always good after God has spoken or if he hasn't spoken to go back to the word of God and to see what the word of God says. And if you're really lost, go and speak to other Christians and seek some good Christian counsel. And this is always a safe practice. And the more we spend time asking God, listening to God, thinking about God, reading the Bible and understanding God's word, the better we can be in knowing God. Like I say, when you study the word of God and you read about how God's moved in the past, you get a pretty good picture on how God is probably going to move in the future. Through listening to God moving in that generation, I've got a picture of how God's going to move in the future generation because there's nothing new under the sun and the same things really do keep going round in circles. Now, the reason I'm passionate about this and I've mentioned all this to you is that I think that Christians have got to be a people that listen to God's voice. That's the one thing that really separates Christianity from any of the other religions of the world. God still speaks. God isn't silent. He's not mute. He's not dead. God didn't just send the prophets. No, God has poured this Holy Spirit upon all believers today so that we might be like the prophets that God would be able to speak to face to face one day. He can speak to through dreams and cryptic visions. He can speak to through messages. He can speak to through our spirits. He can speak to in so many ways. In the New Testament, believers in Jesus Christ, we hear from God and God speaks to us. And that makes us very different from a lot of religions with holy books where they only read the holy book or they interpret the holy book, but they have no idea what God personally wants for them right now because they just rely on what God's spoken in the past. Christianity is not about the past. It's about a relationship and relationships aren't based on what's happened. They're based upon how we feel about God and how much we trust that person right now. Dead relationships focus on the past. Living relationships have the ability for us to trust God right now. That's why Christians are called to live by faith. Because when you're in a relationship, that's how relationships work. You believe God, you trust him, you put your faith in him. And as a result of it, he speaks to you, you follow him, you get to trust him more, you get to better know him, you make a mistake, he might correct you. He gets to understand and see your heart and see you grow and you grow together in that relationship, knowing one another more and more intimately as time goes on. Christianity is a relationship with God. Now, the reason I emphasize this so much and I keep saying that line and I hear myself saying it then is that I want every Christian to know that our relationship with God is one that we need to invest in. And so we've got to read the Bible. We've got to seek God and both of them are really important. We've got to allow God to lead us and we've got to be open to God's leading. So often in times, it's very easy for us to just go to the Bible alone and we basically relegate God to only have speaking in the past and not speaking today. I wouldn't have a very good relationship with my wife if I didn't listen to what she has to say today because she's spoken to me in the past. And unfortunately, I think that a lot of people are guilty of doing this with God. There are many people in this world right now that don't know God at all because they've never given themselves a chance to ask God, are you out there? Would you speak to me? Who are you? Would you reveal yourself to me? And it'd probably make them understand that we you know what, we're not good enough, that we're not holy, that we've got so many flaws compared to him. And it would probably end with them getting saved. And as a result of them meeting God, 
they trust the Bible. Some people go through different means. Some people study, study, study. They read the Bible. They learn the Bible. They learn all about God. And they say, hmm, this God sounds profound. I believe what's written in this book enough for me to say, God, if you're out there, save me and forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died. And I believe that you rose again on the third day. It can happen either way. I'm not closing the doors either way. You might have your first experience with God. We're not speaking through words, through the spirit, through dreams, through the book. through But it might speak to you through a touch, through someone praying for you and through God bringing a healing upon you. I'm just throwing it out there because God can speak in any way that he wants. And so remember that the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. And it's really important that we understand this. And so let me read the passage about it. Paul the Apostle was speaking to the one of the churches in the book of Corinthians. And in this church, what was happening was that men had began to preach a false message about God, a false gospel. And so what had happened was that they were writing letters to approve themselves or to get them recommended before, before the church, to win over the church trust. And Paul the Apostle was like, what is this? Paul was saying that, you know what? I don't need recommendations to prove the message that I'm preaching. You are the evidence. The fact that you have a changed life, the fact that the Spirit of God is in you, the fact that God speaks to you, that is the evidence that my message is real and that my message is true. I don't need to write extra letters. And by the way, this is how you get many of the false gospels and, and those Gnostic gospels. They're not hidden away. They're hidden in plain sight. Paul clearly teaches us that there were people in the church, in the church, is trying to deceive many, writing false literature and false writing to try and make themselves seem like these great super apostles. And Paul says, no, the evidence isn't in their writings. The evidence is the lives of the people that they touch. It's the people that they get saved. It's the people that they that they help to live for God and to overcome their addictions, to overcome their sin, to overcome their shame. That's what it is that's so important to God. It's the witness of the living spirit of God moving inside another believer that's so important. And so I'm going to read a text and then I'm going to draw this to a close. And the text reads as follows. We Are we being commended to you ourselves again? Or do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? Like I said, People were taking letters and getting letters written to recommend them so that they could be trusted as ministers. And Paul says, I don't need that. You yourselves are our letter of recommendation written on our hearts to be known and read by all. And so you show that you are a letter from Christ delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. We scroll down. Verse 4. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are suffering in ourselves, claiming anything it came from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us to be sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life verse 7 now if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the israelites could not gaze upon moses's face because of its glory which was being brought to an end will not the ministry of the holy spirit have even more glory and so I'm going to end by saying this. Paul is saying that the greatest testimony is a testimony written in people's hearts. It's changed lives. The laws of God are brilliant. They're excellent. Moses presented them in the, the Ten Commandments. And they were so glorious that people, that Moses had to veil his face because the glory of God being revealed through the law of God was so great. But how much greater is it when you can reveal the glory of God by changing a life, by causing someone to believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Saviour. So please do keep following my, my videos. Like I say, I'm going to link the playlist above so that you can see all of the new content that I'm making. 
and all of the new videos in the spirit this is part one there's going to be a number of parts so if you haven't already please do take the chance to like comment subscribe to my channel and remember it's not by the letter of the law but it's by the spirit of life